Hello and welcome back to the Wrexham Way. Hope you're doing well and looking forward to today's episode as we take on Arsenal and Tottenham and Northland and Derby essentially in today's episode. And they're going to be both pretty tough games. Uh, one away from home against Arsenal, the home game against Tottenham. I think we might get battered in both, but it'll be fun to play against some big teams. Well, fun until, of course, we start losing games and things like that. But if you think we're going to have a good episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I think the first thing to do is talk about what's happened since you guys were last here for the big 4-0 win against Aston Villa. We actually got another big win, a 3-2 win against bottom of the table, West Brom. It was a very important win because they are bottom of the table. If we didn't win that, we would be in some trouble because we picked up six points from those two games. That's really helped us out in our relegation battle. We then, weirdly enough, had three weeks off. Two of them were for international break, but one of them was just a random week off for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why. So I scheduled a friendly against Copenhagen. We drew 1-1, but it kept some match fitness in some of our players, which I thought might do us some good heading into the game against Man City. It didn't because they dominated us and were unlucky to only win 1-0. But it's Man City. What do you expect? But because of the six points we've picked up recently, things are looking good for us. After 31 games that we have played, we sit on 30 points in total. So we are on track to get the point per game ratio that we need to stay up this season. Particularly as well because Everton have not won any games in between episodes. They are now seven points behind us and we have a game in hand. This could be big if we get the results against Arsenal today. Actually, no, it's Tottenham we seem to have a game in hand against. I think it's Arsenal we play first though, isn't it? So we'll play that game in hand at some point, obviously. Also, some big news in our young player department. We have had the youth intake come through and it's not the greatest youth intake in the world. There's a keeper with four and a half stars of potential who could be quite handy. And then quite a few defenders with three and a half and four star potential who could be quite good. But it did remind me that actually I didn't even get around to posting the youth intake from last season on Patreon. So I'll make sure to do that very soon. I'll get the youth intake on there for you guys on Patreon to claim some players. And particularly, you might want to try and be claiming Neil Long. He is the guy who came through last season who is very, very good and has just come 10th in the next gen awards which is a fantastic achievement for him but it's not quite as fantastic as number one placed Herrera he's won the next gen awards which is absolutely phenomenal those two are not the only Wrexham players in this though a uh, bit further down the list Vadina our left back that we brought in at the start of the season he's come in the top 20 or so and then also you and our winger out on loan currently at commentary actually is in the top 40 I believe as well so four players in the top 50 next gen players I think that's pretty good going. Also more impressive that two of them are players we have produced, which is even more incredible, I think. Annoyingly, they are both in the same left wing position though, which is uh, a bit annoying. Anyway, I think we're going to jump straight into this game against Arsenal today. They are third in the table with 15th, so it's probably going to be a whitewashing from Arsenal's point of view, I would imagine. But this is the team that I think is going to get the job done. Still in between the sticks is Andreucci. I'm still pretty pleased with him and his last five games have been a 7.3 rating. So he's been playing pretty well. Spadina is back in that back line alongside Lucas Holter, Camboala and Paul Dillon. Ostergaard just in front with Galbraith and Herrera in the centre of midfield. Pizarro on the left, Robergen on the right and Sione leading the line. I realise I'm probably saying his name wrong because there's an A in there, but I said the old Sione's wrong name, name wrong anyway. So, I mean, get used to it, basically. Right then, kickoff is upon us here today against Arsenal. Away from home, they've got a really, really decent team, to be fair. But I think it might be ageing a little bit. Uh, I don't know too much. We're about, what, seven years into the save now or something like that? I do think their back line of Ben White, Christian Romero, Gabriel Tierney, they must be getting into their 30s now, I would imagine. Maybe Gabriel's like in his late 20s, it says on there somewhere. 30 years old, exactly. They're getting into their sort of early 30s and stuff like that. So an ageing back line. Yes, they are third in the league right now, doing very, very well. I'm not too far off a title, actually. But still, I think the youthfulness of our squad, uh, if we can actually pass the ball, uh, should be able to beat this Arsenal side when it comes to physicality, potentially. But coming forward right now, as I just, you know, slate Arsenal's ageing side. Of course they score. Smith throw the goal. Congrats, lad. And now they've got a corner and they're going to show me their physical dominance, aren't they, from a corner. No, Lucas Halter clears that one out from the back and Smith throw gets there just in front of our players as they score in the goal. Potentially offside though. The linesman is flagging for it. I thought it was close. I'm not entirely sure if it was though. I think it might be all right. Oh no, goal disallowed. Okay, you love to see it. How close was it? And who was the offside player? 
Oh, okay, actually, yeah, that is fairly offside. Good, I'm glad. Also, Andre Almeida. I feel like we had him in the past at Vitoria on a stream save. I'm correct. Annoyingly, actually, I've just seen the match stats. We've had eight shots of their six shots. We're actually doing quite well in this game, to be fair. And if Rebergen can oh, get that one in the back of the net, that would have been absolutely amazing as Sione's ball back across the area is stopped by the well-positioned keeper after making a very, very good save from Rebergen's attempted header. The highlight is continuing with 10 seconds or so left in this half. If they score now, I'll be fuming. Please. <sighs> well, that is... Kind of our season summed up, I think. Kind of our season summed up. We are good, and we have been in it this season. It's not like we've been absolutely dominated by everyone that we've played this season. We have been in it. But we just can't get that final ball in the back of the net, and then other teams have got that just ability to hit us on the counter. To They've just got the better players who are just that bit technically better that can just do special things and score goals. Like Probably what they're going to do right now with Ben White in the area, he... Gets a cross into the middle somehow. And then Smith throw blocks. Right, counter now, boys. Come on, let's get ourselves back in this game. Let's get ourselves back a goal as Pizarro has a chance to stretch his legs and try and prove something to me this season. Since switching him to an inverted wing, he's actually improved his average ratings quite significantly. But we score a goal. Okay, game back on. Could we take this one to Arsenal? If we can pick up a point here, a point here would be absolutely fantastic for us in our bid to try and stay away from that relegation zone. Not quite sure what Everton are doing right now. We should probably have a look in a second to see what's going on after this highlight finishes off. But again, it's pressure from Arsenal. Can we just stop the pressure? Great save, Andreucci, by the way. That was a huge save from him. Will the highlight continue? It's looking like it might do, you know. And this could mean a goal as Rebergen has been put through. Sione's been put through. Sione on the edge of the area, chips the keeper off the crossbar. You hate to see it so, so close at the other end. We are in this game, you know. Also, Everton looks like they're actually winning their game, Everton. Uh, they are 3-0 up against Man United. Okay, well, that's slightly concerning for us because as it stands right now, there'll be four points behind us. Although we still have that game in hand, but it's against Tottenham, so that could be interesting. Tottenham just dropped down... A little bit. Are they playing right now? They're not playing right now. So I guess they're you know, waiting for the game to play later on or something like that. But we need to get ourselves back in this game. A point will be absolutely crucial. But we need to make some changes. Sione not playing brilliantly out there. Let's bring Roxfarg on instead. Pizarro on the left not playing brilliantly. Let's bring Jacobson on as well. And Spadina playing quite poorly. Let's bring Josh Tymon on as well. So three changes all at the same time as we clear the ball out from the back. Good. I think it's just a highlight for the substitutes, I imagine. Corner for Arsenal. Smith throw into the middle. And it's another great save from Andreucci there. But the referee seen something off the ball. And I think he's giving Arsenal a penalty. VAR's checking it. I think Gabriel went down at the near post and penalty has been awarded. I think Galbraith may have pushed him. I did a see on the commentary at the bottom. Right. <sighs> Andreucci, we need you to make a big save here. And he has made a huge save to keep us in this game. We're going to encourage the team. Come on, we can get something out of this. And I might even change some of the roles to be a little bit more attacking. Like we are right in this game. We are so in it. And this is the sort of game that gives me a lot of hope for next season when we have some better players in the team. It gives me an awful lot of hope, actually, as whew, Andreucci clears that one right off his line. Okay, highlights finished. Arsenal have dominated things in the past five, ten minutes or so. They're up to 21 shots compared to our 16. But there's been plenty of shots. Great attacking play in this game from both teams. We're going to go to uh, wing-backs on attack, I think, for both of these players right now. And maybe even... I mean, we're losing right now anyway, aren't we? So at this stage, we may as well just try something, you know, to just try and break the deadlock a little bit. You know, we're either going to lose by more or we're going to score a goal. And so we've got to try and push people forward, particularly at this late stage of the season. Sadly for us, even doing that has not resulted in a goal for us. You hate to see it. But I tell you what, it's a game where I think we have played really well. And, oh, it's... We're so nearly there. I think I've also just seen Gaston Andreucci got an 8.1 rating that game, which shows how great he was in that particular game. Uh, Andreucci, 8.1 rating. 12 saves in that game. That's pretty mad, to be fair. Uh, obviously, two goals conceded. But a penalty save as well is pretty impressive. So it's another good game for Gaston Andreucci. But we really probably do need someone better coming in next season. 
I mean, he's still apparently a League One standard player. I, I don't believe it because he won the Championship Best Goalkeeper of the Year last season. He's done great in the Premier League in terms of average ratings, to be fair. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Anyway, it's seven days off until the Tottenham Hotspur game. Uh, that's our game in hand, I believe. So I guess other teams aren't playing on that Saturday. And now, after his great performance, he's asked for a new contract, which I don't particularly want to give him right now. So I'm going to try and get uh, Adam Thomas Parry to have a word with him and tell him that uh, he no longer wants a new deal, which is great. So thank you, Adam Thomas Parry, again for your... He's got to stay captain forever now. Even if he... I mean, he's not played much this season, to be fair. He's kind of got to stay captain forever on the grounds that he is saving my bacon with contracts and stuff like that it's great also Sheffield United are playing right now they lose 3-1 to Newcastle which is good for us because that's Sheffield United in a relegation battle with us they've lost another game they're in really bad form to be fair and could even be overtaken by Everton at some point soon uh, Brentford have actually caught up as well to Everton so they've cut themselves and they, well, they have dragged themselves into this battle as well so all of a sudden where it looked like there was only one team in this battle it's now another team in there so potentially, like, anyone from Bournemouth down could be going down. And that's worrying. And here you can see the seven-team relegation scrap. Or six-team, really, because West Brom are basically down, I would say. West Brom, I don't think they can really save themselves. And, it's, yeah, it's a whole synopsis of the six teams and West Brom that could be going down this season. Interestingly, we do have, uh, if I can find it, we're down here, uh, Brentford and Everton to play. And I think we'll probably do it next episode because that'll be very, very exciting. But it's teams like Southampton that have a tough run of fixtures. Bournemouth have a really tough run of fixtures. I mean, even Sheffield United, they've got the they've got the absolute opposites. They've got teams around them and then teams in the Champions League places. Probably Everton, actually, who have the easiest run of fixtures to finish the season off, actually. So, I mean, good luck to them. Although not too much luck against us because, I mean, <laughs> that would be bad for us if they beat us. It gives me some confidence, though, knowing that other teams have a harder run of fixtures. That that's what's keeping me alive right now for the Tottenham game do I want to change anyone in the lineup uh, I don't think so actually maybe Spadina swaps over with Tymon for this next game because uh, Spadina is good but Tymon is a little bit more consistent because he's older and I think we're going to need some consistency for this game but they played well against Arsenal I'm going to give them a chance to play again today against Tottenham at home get a win God, get a win would be absolutely monumental for us. So kickoff is upon us and it uh, looks like Tottenham are actually matching us right now with a 4-3-3 as well with a uh, CDM in the team. So we're pretty evenly matched in terms of tactics right now. I'm thinking of maybe changing tactics again next season. I quite like this 4-3-3. I think it gives us quite good shape and stability. We're not quite as good going forward obviously without the strikers as Tottenham score a goal early on, you hate to see it. But the other formation that I am thinking of using is the one that we used in the streamer showdown because that one worked really well in the streamer showdown. So I'm I'm pretty tempted to give it a go and see what happens with it um, because I think it'll be a lot of good fun, potentially. It's a, it's a very narrow formation. It doesn't reuse really wingers and that's the one issue about it. It doesn't use wingers. But if we can't get Rebergen back next season because obviously we want to try and get him back again next season... It's an option to try and save some money and not focus too much on wing play, just focus through the middle and stick to our strengths. Also, another area that I want to talk about about this uh, Wrexham save is the stadium. Now, this season we've been limited to just the 9,000 seats because that's how many seats are seated in uh, the racecourse grounds where Wrexham play. You can see actually it's even represented in the game. Uh, you can see this stand which has now disappeared. Hang on a second. This stand here, look, it's just gone behind everything. It's like they're in the pitch, basically. Hopefully, when we score a goal here, you'll see it. But there's a whole empty stand at the end, and that's meant to be the uh, terracing at one end of the race course ground, which is pretty cool, but it's actually in-game as well. But because the Premier League is an all-seater stadium um, uh, league at the moment, in real, in real life it is, so it stays like that in Football Manager for the whole of the, the Football Manager. I don't think you can actually get like, you know, standing seats or whatever it is in games or as Pizarro scores a goal. You love to see it. We might get quite a good view of that stand uh, from this highlight uh, as well. Or oh, the replay, I should say, of the goal. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is we are very limited. We are selling out. We need to ask the board for a new stadium because last season they did try to, without me asking them, extend the stadium and the local council said, no, you can't do that, which was rather frustrating. So we need a new stadium to be built. And I'm thinking about asking for that as that's a really annoying goal to concede there 
Now, I might ask now if they want to build a new stadium uh, rather than wait till the end of the season because uh, there is a reason for it. Oh, because they might do it at the end of the season anyway. But I'd like to you know, get it on an episode of them actually saying, yes, you can have a new stadium. So I'll ask them about it anyway at the end of today's episode. But I think the, I think they'll still say no, even though we have got about 30 million or so in the bank account. Obviously, we'd like to spend it on players, but we are overdue a new stadium. As Sione finds Herrera and... Well, the ball's not gone in the back of a net. How did that not go in the back of a net at any point? That is so frustrating. As Arsenal are currently 3-3 with Everton. It's just popping up behind me, I imagine. So we might see that one later on. They're now 4-3 up. You'd love to see it. So Arsenal beating Everton. That's really good for us. As Rebergen at the far post puts it over the bar. Again, it's another game where we are like the nearly team. Like, I think we are in this game. We're doing very, very well. But it's just because Tottenham have those better quality players like Arsenal do. They just have that extra bit of quality to actually, you know, score the goals that we maybe can't score and things like that, which is frustrating. Although Pizarro's through again, can't score. Galbraith can score, though. It's 2-2, pending any offside, which I don't think there is. You love to see it. Wrexham 2, Tottenham 2. And now we've got a corner. Rebergen into the middle. Camboala's there in the back of the net. And are we going to get three points today here against Tottenham? This would be absolutely monumental in the relegation battle. I mean, so come on. Just, you know, get the game done and dusted, please. I'm going to take Ostergaard off. He's got an injury. We'll bring Alec on the pitch instead. Josh Tymon, interestingly, actually playing terribly this time around. So Spadina will come on to... There are two changes that we'll make right now just to settle the back line a little bit, give a bit of energy to it as Tottenham are through. 15 minutes to go in this game. Still a long time to play as they get the ball in a wide position. Can they get a ball into the middle? No, they can't. Galbraith clears it, but poorly clears it to only Tottenham players. As again, the ball into the middle and it's a goal at the far post. Easy. That's so frustrating. We just need to be a little bit better in every single position, really. I say that. I think Herrera is good enough. Sione is good enough as well once he gets to the ground running next season, I imagine. Uh, we have got some decent players. Spadina will be good enough. Pizarro could be good enough if he can get his shots on target. But as the clock ticks down, we actually probably deserve to win this game. More shots, more XG, more possession, everything. Like we have battered... Well, not battered. We've, we've done slightly better than Tottenham here today. Draw might actually be the correct result, really. Maybe, you know, there's always going to be one team slightly on top, haven't there? Although it's not over yet. It is over. It's 3-3. Corner to be swung into the middle then, which is far from ideal. You hate to see it. And so the game does finish 3-3 in the end. I mean, a point from today's episode is fantastic. But given how well we played in that game, to not get the three points is annoying. One of those things, though, as we stay 15th in the table, uh, Everton... Ended up losing 4-3, which is great for us. That's really, really good. And things are looking okay. I think we'll be all right. So next episode, we're going to come back for Everton and Brentford. And that will probably end up being the last episode of this season. Because if we beat them both, that should save us from relegation. Fingers crossed. Either way, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.